All right, we're recording. So anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Oh no! Don't don't. Oh shoot! I forgot to post my um my video. <laughs> Yo, uh, I would just like to personally thank Erica at this point in time because if it weren't for her we would not be doing the episode i literally already posted on instagram that we was not having an episode oh uh, i took it down i took it down before anybody saw it um <laughs> yeah so um hold on yeah so yeah yeah uh, it's been a week, man. Since last week and this week, I I just feel beat up. I'm so... Yo, my hair looks crazy right now. Don't even care. There we go. All right. Um, sorry. What's up? How are you? What is you doing? Oh my goodness. This week has been beating me up. Yesterday I woke up. First of all, I slept so hard on uh, Monday night into Tuesday morning. I woke up confused, first off. I was like, who set the alarm? I couldn't remember that I set an alarm. I said, what time is it? And I was like, isn't it Saturday? It's Tuesday. Tuesday like I jumped straight through the rest of the week yesterday was a doozy um a long day very much long day at work today another day of running like a chicken without a head um my back hurt I'm tired and this is probably <laughs> this damn is the I've gone Without taking a full day off of work. And, you know, I used to tear up my leave back in my days. But I haven't because I'm trying to still build so much. Listen. And I have been sitting here, like, every time somebody gets on a call with me, I'm like, hello. Like, I, I don't have the time for the, hey, how are you? Good morning. No. <laughs> what do I need to do now? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? That's it? Oh, all right. And then no more on the meetings. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. No, I just leave. I just leave the meetings now. I'm just so tired. <laughs> it. <laughs> Yo, I took a day off last week. I took today off. Mm -hmm. Y'all, let me tell. So we. this is not really even an episode, to be honest with you. We just going to tell you about the bullshit. <laughs> and then we're going to get out of here. This is literally going to be like a 12 minute episode. Dead ass. I'm sorry, y'all. You might I'm actually, sorry. we actually might, might want to do headlines or whatnot first. Let me introduce the show. We might actually want to just do headlines and then, and then yeah, because, yeah. Uh, and all of it is sports related to me for headlines. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, I'm not about to be on here talking about Diddy for 45 minutes. I'm not about to be talking about Trump for 45 minutes. What else it's happening to me? Nothing positive. Yeah. Same old, same old bull snatch. <laughs> for real, man. I'm about to eat these Nutter Butter cookies, though. Hello, I've been eating some cookie dough every time I go upstairs. Oh my gosh. Okay, y'all, we're going to get into a couple little things today. <laughs> Enjoy the music. Hope you've been taking care of yourselves since the last time. <laughs> I think we were talking about the rough week we were having and then just get followed up with another rough week. Yes, because <laughs> we did an episode after Dr. Ashley Dash 
And then, wait, I'm so confused. Wasn't she the last episode? What was the last episode? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yo, we just been mm -hmm. jacked up. Yeah, she was the last episode. I think we talked it's, about it then. The, 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 the roughness just never stopped. It got worse, but um, mm -hmm. I will I will hit the headline music for you. Are you re ready for headlines? Are you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. We have sports news, guys. Okay. So, NCAA tournament. I will only be speaking on the women's because that's what I followed. Um, sorry. South Carolina goes undefeated this season, taking down Iowa 87 to 75. <laughs> Dawn Staley, head coach of South Carolina, she admitted that there were a lot of challenges faced with having a younger team with the lateness to practices, the no communication, everything. So really happy for her to see this big achievement and especially for all the girls in South Carolina. For Caitlin Clark, she's entering in the WNBA draft, but she's not alone. Angel Reese from LSU is also entering into the WNBA draft. So that's going to be something to see. Um, there's a lot of chitter chatter from a couple of players in the WNBA and it made a couple of blogs saying that they were being haters for kind of telling or saying that Caitlin Clark, she's not going to have like a good time in the WNBA and stuff like that. Just a lot of just gossip, rumors, just stuff to scare anyone who's new, who's a rookie. Um, and Haley Van Lith, I always butcher that last name from LSU, she entered in the transfer portal and she was, she had the 48 hour window to either enter in the WNBA draft or she was going to stay for another year and she decided to enter into the transfer portal. So definitely want to see what LSU is going to look like next year and especially where is Haley going to go? So that's all my headlines for today. That's it. Oh, oh my gosh. And there is another one, but <laughs> I actually saw it like 10, 15 minutes ago. I thought it was really funny. I don't know if you saw it on social media where <laughs> this girl, she had to basically post in a Facebook group, are we dating the same guy to hunt down her husband because he basically decided to no longer be a father and up and left her when she was pregnant with their youngest child and he vanished. I'll and be jailed. She, she's been trying to hunt him down to serve, to not serve, but get him to sign divorce papers. And yeah, serve. Found, yeah. And he was found in Texas. Now, I can't remember where she was I'll from. I'll be jailed. But he was found in Texas being a chef <laughs> for a team, for a producer, uh, Taylor Sheridan. Like a big, like high top <laughs> celebrity producer. And they were able to track him down in this Facebook group and on TikTok, track him down where she can now proceed with getting these fourth paper signed. Unbelievable that he basically did like an old 1900s, 1800s type of thing where he dropped everything, moved a couple towns over, and changed his name practically. Crazy, but I'll also. I'll be damned. They were, they were finding hits on him on like Bumble in Texas. So a lot of women really helped with that. And within 24 hours, she was able to locate her husband who's been just gone, vanished. So that's crazy. Those are your headlines. Um, I'm confused by that headline because why not just divorce her? Exactly. Like, why did she have to hunt you down to for you to sign the papers? I'll be damned. It shouldn't I'll have be been damned. that difficult. <sighs> First of all, shout out and congratulations to the ladies of USC, Coach Dawn Staley. Congratulations again. I'll be damned. Oh, I meant. <laughs> <laughs> As a native South Carolinian-ish, I was born in Georgia, but grew up in South Carolina. I have no memories of Georgia. 
yeah, it was great to see. Glad to see it. Love to see it. Women's basketball um, definitely got its stock risen, which is a great thing. There's a lot of conversation about that going on. So hopefully some of these young superstars will, will carry that with them going into the WNBA. Um, and I hope this isn't just a um, temporary thing. I hope that the support and the love that they've been getting will continue. I'm yes. off center on my camera. And okay, no more racism, black and white thing. It's absolutely sports. not the racism. Absolutely, you know what country you in? I was. A, it's just been bad I'll be lately. And, and also, the the fact that they're interviewing Dawn Staley. She's happy. She's elated. Her team won, and they're asking her questions about Caitlin Clark. Like, come on. Because we can't. They don't want to see us excel or win or be the best at anything. No, no, no. It disrupts their spirit. It disrupts their energy, and it pisses them off even more that their kids are growing up wanting to be like us and emulating us. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just what it is. Uh, man. Okay. What did we say we were going to talk about? J. Cole versus Kendrick Lamar. This will be brief. Um, you know, hip-hop has always been competitive. There's always been some type of beef. But uh, it is typically rap beef. Y'all are rapping. Y'all spitting bars at each other. And for years, the big three, Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar, who have been crowned the big three, the top three in hip-hop, the leaders of the new school, not so much new school. They're getting old now. Uh, <laughs> have always thrown shots, little bars at each other. They've done songs with each other. So it's been an interestingly, interestingly weird relationship. Well, Kendrick Lamar took shots on a song with Future on Future's new album. I don't even remember the name of it. This is how detached I am because I listen to old school hip hop. Do you know the name of that song? You don't know the name of it. Anyway, mm -mm. y'all know what it is. We late anyway because this came out last... Hold on, send my story. I don't know. But anyway, and then... So this is the interesting thing that happened. Uh, <laughs> J. Cole drops an album called... I might delete this later. I think that's the name of the album, right? So... Welcome to Apple Music. I'm already a member of Apple Ooh. Music. Y'all charging me again? Might delete later. He has a song called Seven Minute Drill where he disses Kendrick Lamar. And I want to say a day or two later, he apologizes to Kendrick Lamar and said him doing that didn't sit right with his spirit. So a lot of people have come out upset. A lot of people came out defending Cole. I was, well, first of all, how do you feel about this? Are, are you involved in any of this listening? <laughs> the way you shaking your head before I even get the question out. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so far removed from it, but I'm also like, why didn't you just stand on it? Why did you come? Like, you didn't even let it settle in for a minute. You automatically did it and said, ooh, let me go apologize. My AC is on. I'm not turning it off today, y'all. I'm sorry. It is. But this is just one of those pods. I'm sorry. Hold on. No, nah, I might, because that's annoying. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to pause this time so you won't have to entertain the people. Okay, I'm back. It's, it, it'll go off in a second, y'all. So you're removed. You don't really have any thoughts or feelings about this, do you? No, I I said I'm so far removed from this, but also just like, dude, you didn't even let it marinate or settle <laughs> in before you said, wait, I took that back. Like, that's just, I don't know, that's just crazy to me. So, I haven't done a deep dive and I haven't checked everyone's opinions on it. Uh, I will say this, though. I'm personally disappointed, but not really because I'm not in the hip hop the way I, I'm not into present day hip hop. I'm stuck between the mid early nineties, New York to mid two thousands crunk 
Nas, D Block, and some other people. That's it. That's that's like where I sit. Anything after that with this auto tune and this melodic stuff, y'all got it. It's not for me. I'm not gonna say it's bad or blah blah blah. Artist subjective, blah blah blah. It's just not for me. I don't listen to it. I don't vibe to it. Couldn't tell you ten new artists if you offered me fifty million dollars right now. Could I'd fail. Fail. Probably could name two. Uh, so <clears throat> I was excited just because I'm not completely oblivious. Like I know J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick are the big three, right? And so one of the things that I love about hip hop and that makes hip hop so cool and interesting is the beefs. When you have talented people in this artistic field using their creativity to show and prove that they're better than the other person or dissing the other person. And I ain't talking about the street side, you know, because there isn't always a street side to it. Sometimes there have been street sides to it, but sometimes it's like, yo, who can outwrap the other person? Who can do this better? Like, what can this person say? How clever or witty can they get? And that's what I was looking forward to from them. Because I'm like, all right, I need to go back and listen and do my little history and homework and catch these verses because someone out there going to put it together. And then he does this. So I'm like, dang, we're not going to get this epic showdown that we thought. But I thought about it. Um, and hip hop is different. These too many rappers are dying and really killing each other and really harming each other over music. Uh, mm -hmm. And taking a lot of things personal. Uh, sidebar, you didn't ask for my opinion, but I didn't give it. I think some of it is because... Some of them aren't as talented as they think. And, you know, if you lose a rap battle, it hurts your pockets. Big time. <laughs> like, you, nobody wants to be the butt of a joke these days. So when someone, you know someone's better than you, <laughs> you don't want to be the butt of a joke. You don't want to look at whatever, however, in these streets, then you do something about it. And I think J. Cole kind of, though I don't, I don't think those three have real, I highly doubt those three have real street beef with one another. Like Kendrick ain't that type of guy. I ain't even built like that. He got them people around him, but he ain't built like that. Drake for show sure ain't built like that. Cole has dabbled in some stuff, but I don't think those three, those three don't come from a street background regardless. Whatever y'all want to say or think, they got money, they got goons. Yeah, but that's not who they are. They weren't the growing up drug dealing on the block, shoot them up, bang, bang dudes. So I don't, I don't foresee anything violent resulting from this. I just expected some good, witty, crafty bars and some good music. So now, you know, one of the big three has stepped back. Where does he end up in the legacy of hip hop? Who knows? I, for me, it's, I don't know if it's a mark against him or a mark for him at this point. Uh, because I get it. You know, like he even said in the dish, like, you my guy, you my man, we cool, but it's like, you know, we friendly, but at the same time, like, I got to go at you. I don't know. It's weird. It was a weird turn. <clears throat> but, I mean, if something don't sit right with your spirit, something don't sit right with your spirit. So, um, that leaves Kendrick and Drake mm. um, as far as beef. And the rumor is, according to Joe Budden, both of them have been in the booth and both of them have laid some fire. And it may be dropping soon. So we may be hearing from Drake and Kendrick on this. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see. Uh, it's not... Jay-Z Nas level like I was hoping I, I thought Cole would have been better a better battle but whatever it seems like we're about to get some good old hip-hop battling beef not street beef don't go out here beating people up shooting people up y'all it's just wax it's music this has happened throughout hip-hop Biggie and Pac uh, Joe Button and everybody in hip-hop Jay-Z and Mob Deep Jay-Z and um J.O. Felony Jay-Z and Nas Nas and Cameron, State Property versus D Block. Like it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Like it's it's a thing in hip hop. So I guess to J. Cole's point, maybe he's trying to curb that and keep things peace and cool. But I'm like, yo, it's always gonna be competitive. It's always gonna be competitive. Even if y'all ain't trying to compete, the rap fans are gonna say, yo, I think he got you on this verse, or they got you on this verse. Like it's competitive. That's just the way it is. But that is what it is, y'all. So we'll see what happens in the world of hip-hop when it comes to Kendrick Lamar and Drake. Obviously, J. Cole has bowed out of this. Um, again, I'm disappointed by that. But do what's best for you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't connected to none of this anyway. So 
it's on y'all. Uh, I just hope we get some more good music out of this. Yeah. And that's a wrap for the show. We literally have nothing else to talk about except for um what did I text you? Let me see. I was nothing. I texted again. you nothing. All right, I'm going to tell y'all about my struggling life and how I almost got scammed and I still don't know how what? I almost got scammed. Yeah. Ooh, news for me. Do you have anything else you want to share before I tell this long story? I've been talking for a long time. No. <laughs> Damn. No. <laughs> Shortest episode of the year. <laughs> so, what was that last week I took off? Yeah. That was a mental health day. Um, Deserve. I always keep my options open as far as career, so I've been job hunting. The scammers are on LinkedIn, y'all. Don't know why. Oh. <laughs> They're on LinkedIn. Uh, let's see what happened. I got an email last week from Virginia saying I owed property taxes for my car. And I'm like, wait, like I've been left y'all or whatnot. Um, that's one thing that happened. I, I emailed her like, yo, you sure this is correct? She sent me the receipts. I went in my car, looked at my registration and my receipt, her receipts were indeed valid. Uh, so that was a bill. <laughs> yeah, that was a bill. A job I applied for, right? They emailed me back. Email looked legit. The written message didn't have any errors in it, nothing. I had other friends looking at it because I was excited because that salary was nice. The low end of the salary was 80000 That was the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right. Um, <clears throat> so doing my thing, going about my life. What else has happened to me? Uh, <laughs> something else happened. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. I woke up one day. Either Thursday or Friday last week, and my left Achilles was killing me. Now, I didn't go to the gym. I didn't even go to the gym that week because I wasn't feeling good that week. Achilles was, and it's still like tender. And I have no idea why I've done nothing athletic but get up at work. I haven't lifted anything heavy. I'm like, why is my Achilles hurting? Like, it's hurting. Like, this is it's weird. Not torn, is it? From what? Sleep? Because, no. Uh, because apparently, like, people, they tear their Achilles so easily, like, just stepping off of a curb. Like, that's, like, an easy injury. I don't think it's torn. It's not an excruciating pain, but I... It's just strained. Perhaps. But I'm just trying to figure out what I... I didn't... I didn't even go to the gym. So I'm like, right. I haven't... If I was going to tear it, it would be on that Stairmaster. That's a... <laughs> hello. Or doing those uh squats. But I'm like, getting up at my desk at work or going up the stairs at home, like... No, like it could be also uh, contributed to stress. Stress is a big. Oh God, thank you. That's the rest of the story. Um, oh, <laughs> so let me continue. So, <clears throat> and do you due diligence, y'all? So, got the job thing email. I was a little suspicious. Um, and so I email. I, I message two of the people that worked at the company on LinkedIn. One of them is in like cybersecurity. And he was like, well, the company's so big, I don't, I can't tell you if this person works for the company or not. So he was like, but best of luck, you know, moving forward to position. And I messaged another person who was in HR, but they weren't available. Uh, but the other, the reason I was suspicious too is because I looked for the job posting once I got the email. I was like, did I even apply to this? And I did, but the company logo wasn't in the job posting. And the person, they had been on LinkedIn for a long time, but their profile apparently was private. And so I couldn't find them on LinkedIn, but I'm like, this is a real company. It exists. But I'm like, eh, the fact that the company logo ain't there like it is on all the other job postings, I don't know. But again, the email didn't seem suspicious only because they weren't asking for anything crazy or saying anything crazy and that grammar was correct. So I didn't get another, I, you know, they basically said, are you still interested? I said, yes. So then they sent a questionnaire and they're like, hey, treat this like a preliminary interview you know, we'll review your answers. And it was all questions related to the job. And they even had the job description on it. Company logo at the top of the paper. So again, had my friends look at it. Oh, seems legit. Like, I don't see nothing crazy. And I was like, eh. I was like, these are interview questions. Like, you can look. These are interview questions written professionally. You know, it was interesting. So, I took my time. Put some good ass answers on this thing. You hear me? Good ass answers. Then the other shoe drops. 
So this compounds up to today. So Friday, no, yesterday or the day before, the uh they sent an email. Hey, we reviewed your answers. Uh, this is a role that we need to fill quickly. So no, we were confirming that we received your answers to the questionnaire. We need to fill this role immediately. So you may end up getting a second interview, or we may just hire you based on the questionnaire without an interview. And eh, red flag. Ain't no yeah. way you about to hire nobody just off of filling out a questionnaire that you ain't never seen or talked to. Because you need the personality. Right. Who this? Yeah. You know? Um, so I, I immediately knew. I was like, all right, this is definitely bull snacks. That same day, the HR lady I emailed confirmed. She was like, yeah, that person doesn't work here. We're aware that someone's scamming, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I reported it to LinkedIn. And she gave me somebody in HR. So she was like, hey, if you have any additional details you want to share, share it with her. So I did. Um, and I was mad because, like, I put effort into that questionnaire. Yeah. Because it was asking, like, some questions about, like, curriculum development and what is your methodology and what is your process. So I was confused because I'm like, what are you trying to scam? Like, are you entering this data into some type of AI platform? Because they didn't ask for anything out of the ordinary. Like, they have my resume they have my answers to these questions, but they don't have anything that could necessarily damage me. I mean, you got my name and my phone number in the city I live in, but you don't really have I anything. Think, I don't I know. I think they take your resume because I used to get a lot of people like emailing me and they would want me to send in my resume, I guess, to kind of like help build like other people's. I don't know if that's what it is, but they want your resume. Well, scammers, just hire me and I'll help you with resume writing. I mean, we can Here's do a, that. You know what I'm hello. saying? Don't pay me with scam money, though. Pay me with legit money. But um, I got the job. Um, at starting at one hundred fourteen thousand dollars via email, and I'll have wow. a three day. I'll have a three day training. Um, uh, <laughs> so apparently, I did really well for the scammers on the questionnaire. Uh, so and then they'll have you buy your equipment and just send them the receipt to get reimbursed. Um, That's one of the things that they've been talking about on the scammer uh, job stuff is they try to have you write a blank check or something. Something stupid. But even (laughs) this is a long scam because, again, they're like, hey, we want you for the position. And I think they're like, we just need whatever they ask for. I think they asked for my address, which is too much. Um address phone number something else whatever it was except for the address it was already on my resume but i I was just laughing i was like y'all really running this scam like i almost (laughs) want to play it out to see what the end of the scam is uh but i just blocked the email obviously uh but yeah that's that's how that went um they really thought they had you yeah they i mean they were doing a good job up until we may hire you without an interview um Mm -hmm. yeah so That sucked. False hope, right? Uh, Then my car taxes for South Carolina came in. Wait. (laughs) So you got hit with it twice? Why? Wait. Why did the lady from Virginia just now say something? Because property taxes are due in October. So why should you wait until now? So what pissed me off is it's late now, obviously. Um, But it's like y'all knew... Once I questioned it and you gave me the receipt saying, oh, it looks like you did this in South Carolina. So y'all have my address and y'all could have contacted me at any time, but you didn't. Why you am I j- well right. past the deadline? By the time they emailed me, they're like, you got 15 days to pay this or we're going to send it to collections. Like, clearly you got my new address, my new yeah. phone number and my email. Why would you wait for so long? Like, I don't know. And then you could look at my history and, well, you know what? People go on people and there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. So let me stop. But, like, you could look at my history and tell he's not that type of person. I wonder what's going on. But again, there's so many people. This stuff is automated. Whatever. It's done. I paid it. Then my South Carolina taxes came. And then the Virginia one was like $110 and my South Carolina one is like a buck 50. I'm just like, yo, Ooh, can I get a nice. win? Can I get a win? But can I get a win? No, I'm paying like, I'm paying money, fake jobs, not feeling good. Like these last couple <laughs> weeks been chopping me in the damn throat, yo. I almost ain't recording the podcast today because y'all, I mean, we here to promote positivity. <laughs> but 
through it all, uh, we're here to promote positivity. And it's hard to remain positive when stuff keeps piling on you and piling on you and piling on you. Like these last two weeks have been overall good, but some in the areas of my life, finances one, because y'all know I'm saving up to drop a buy a house, move, whatever my next step is. I'm getting hit. Career, always explore my options. I got hit. Some good things did happen that I can't talk about on air yet, but <clears throat> in the future, I may do that in the near future. But some good things did come of this. But uh, in the spirit of promoting positivity, you have to remember, man, life ebbs and flows. You're going to have good days, bad days, good weeks, and bad mm. weeks. Um, Erica, is a, <laughs> Erica is a prime example of why it's good to have strong people around you because we wouldn't even be doing this episode if it wasn't for her being like, no, nah, come on, let's do it. <laughs> I was mad as hell. Till was like, man, shut up and be lazy like me. Like <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, I thought that was funny because I was just like, if I agree, he's going to be like, see, I knew it. I knew you didn't want to do the episode today. So I was <laughs> like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm never mad at canceling. Unless it's like, unless we got like legit topics, like we can legit go and do it. Then I'd be like, why you don't want to do it? But like this one was like a struggle sode. I don't even know this yeah. is an episode. I might call this struggle sode. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was a truth moment, a very honest and truthful moment for y'all. It is, y'all. We love y'all and we human, you know what I'm saying? And this just happens. And if you've been having a funky ass week, we love you and we hope that it gets better. And we hope that you learn something positive and get something positive from it at the end of the day. But that's my life right now. Um, <clears throat> I want to go on dates and I can't right now. I'm mad. There's so much stuff I want to do I can't do. But you know what? Sometimes God just tells you to be still. And I think that's what he's telling me to do. I need to be still. Yeah. But, hey, I got a fresh haircut and I found out some new information about my vision that's going to help me do some cool stuff that I, in my personal life that'll be great. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I got. I ain't even got a message for the brother, Joe. It's bad. Oof. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to force it and fake it and be like, hey, guys, like, brothers, hopefully you got something out of this episode. That's all, it's, it's bad, yo. It's this. But we here. We're here. And we we've made it. Still we rise. Still we rise. Yeah. Hope y'all are having a great week. Hope you yeah, don't get was... scammed on LinkedIn. Oof. God, man, you damn scammers. If y'all took that effort and energy and put it into something legit, just imagine. I don't know. And Pour one up for us if you drinking tonight. I can't even. I drink had a like glass that. of wine. Oh damn! Sorry, more bad news. I can't. What? Good lord! Yo, went to the doctor six months ago. My blood pressure was borderline. She was like, "You're almost hypertensive." Blah 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 blah. And I've been taking my health. Y'all know I've been talking about my health journey. Uh, shout out to my boy Coach Law Lawrence Inman. Did his health plan and fitness plan. Lost a bunch of weight. I think I lost 40 pounds, something like that. So wow. I've been floating between, for the last two two to three years, I've been floating between 220 and 225 consistently. Um, changed up my diet. 90% of the time I'm drinking water. Um, breakfast is a smoothie. For the last, I want to say month, I really want to say two months actually. Lunch has been a lettuce, a spinach wrap. So, like, the actual wrap, you know, the wrap that you wrap your sandwiches, like, you know, mm -hmm. the wrap itself. I've done the spinach variety of that with hummus, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, and banana peppers. Ooh, and fresh fruit hey for lunch. Yeah, fresh fruit for lunch, right? And that then dinner, dinner, I typically eat bad for dinner, honestly, um, depending on if my mom cooks or if I grab something. But breakfast and lunch to me and my head was balancing it out because I'm like, I don't even, I eat, I'm down to eating meat once a day. Um, so go to the doctor. She looked at my blood pressure. She was like, Nope, I've seen what I need to see and freaking prescribed me blood pressure medication. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that's what I said. I was trying to avoid that. I personally think it's more stress related than, yeah health related because like i go to the gym at least three times a week i ain't going last week i ain't go this week yet i'm going this week but i'm like my lifestyle 
the lifestyle I've been living has been probably the best it, the best it has been in a very long time. Other than when I first started losing weight back in South Carolina. But so I'm like, I know it's stress related and I know that I am very stressed. Like mm -hmm. I wear it well, but I know I'm stressed because I know what's in the back of my mind and I'm frustrated because I'm kind of stuck right now, but I'm still doing what I'm trying to do. So I know it's more stress related. And it's a very low dosage, and she was like, this is more so, we're going to get you back on track. And so I talked to my friend, who's a doctor as well, and she fussed at me. And the issue is I got too much sodium on my diet, basically. Okay. So she was like, yeah, go look at the sodium on those pickles and those banana peppers. And then I started Fair. counting sodium. I mean, I'm only putting five, I'm only putting a serving size. But the serving size of banana peppers and pickles is like 600 milligrams of sodium. So I'm like, okay. So I got to curb my sodium intake, and I think that'll honestly fix it <clears throat> along with this medication. But uh, the, the positive vibe of the week was health as well. And I just, kidding, not kidding, you name it, it is on one of my sides of the family. My mom's side, my dad's mm -hmm. side, we have it, right? So that was another reason why I was before 40, even though I'm 39, I was like, yo, we got to get this health under control. We got to create healthier habits. So drinking is curbed heavily. I might have a beer or two once or twice a month. Liquor, mm -hmm. can't even tell you the last time I bought liquor or a bottle of liquor or wine, right? Um, one, because my stomach don't agree with it like it used to, but two, the health thing. So, yeah. So this last week and a half, <laughs> bills, health, like everything that matters has been slapped in the mouth. So <laughs> I've just been like, man, what the heck? I don't know. That's where we mm. at. Mm. Then she scared me. She was like, oh, if your ankles swell up, so I'm watching my ankles, you know? Yeah, that too. <laughs> but also, I mean, your like your toes and all that, they all swell up once it gets hot outside. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. You <laughs> you make your <laughs> faces like that's common knowledge. I didn't know no, that. No, I didn't make faces like it was common knowledge. I'm like, is that... Is that true? Right? What? I didn't just well, what, that up, what do you right? mean? Did you? No. Where you like, get I've that from? That before. Huh? Like, I've heard that before. From a doctor? Basically, we, like your fingers, all that swells up during uh, when it's hot and then everything shrinks when it's cold. Yeah. I'll be damned. I'll That's be damned. Like, Y'all Google like, that. If you don't, if you wear rings and everything, they're like your fingers swell up when it's hot outside where you can barely take them off. But when it's cold outside, just like your toes, like your feet. Um, like I know when I'm wearing heels in the winter, my, my foot flies out the shoe every time I try to take a walk because your feet shrink when it's cold. It's not like no, like crazy noticeable, like, oh, you shrunk a whole foot size. No. It's just they shrink and they, they fluctuate. Your body expands and it just Yeah. You're I nerd. do I do know that. You're a nerd. <laughs> I got new glasses. Oh, are they green? Yeah. Oh, check you out. Styling and profiling. Oh shit, now I feel fifty. Um oh. <laughs> not styling and profiling. Sorry y'all, not very much positivity. Just uh, just a heads We've up. We been whack a mold. Yeah, like just a heads up, man. Like really serious. So take care of yourself physically, mentally, and financially is something that it, we live by. Like you have to do that. When I ain't with it, I'm taking off work. When I'm out of whack with my budget, I'm cutting back and I'm fixing things. You know, when stuff is out of whack, you gotta you gotta rein it in. You gotta fix it. You gotta hold yourself down, man. And it's very real. I mean, we got to our knowledge. You get one life, you know. Um, I can beat this medication thing. I will beat it. I'm just gonna curb the sodium intake. Got to get back to my cooking habits. I love my mom's cooking. I love my mom's cooking. I wouldn't even call my mom's cooking salty, but she seasons her food more than I do. I know that for mm. sure, especially with the way I was eating. I'm eating chicken breast or baked fish and blah 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 and nah, she fries every now and again she fries stuff but we typically bake stuff but i know that it's more sodium than normal for me mm -hmm. so my body's probably like ah! <laughs> and i don't always finish all my water either so 
you know, small changes. But what I'm really thankful for is even though this challenge has arisen, I'm already doing 90% of what I need to do. Like, I'm already used to Mm -hmm. exercising. I'm already used to drinking water. I'm already used to eating a certain way. It's just small modifications. It's worse when you're doing everything wrong or everything not to your benefit, and then a problem arises, and you got to change your entire lifestyle. That sucks. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful for that. Especially that cold turkey. Woo! I'm going to miss my french fries. All right, that's all I got. Erica, you got anything else for beautiful people? No, I really don't. Uh, we all just get in whack a mold. Keep your head up. Please. Keep your head up. Ooh, child. I they gonna give me the <laughs> I wish y'all could have seen the <laughs> face she made with that. Ew. That's it, y'all. Uh, oh, ham and cheese sandwiches. We are on YouTube now. So those of you who listen to podcasts on YouTube, From My Experience Podcast is on YouTube. Just look up From My Experience Podcast. Um, it goes all the way back to episode 22, all the way up until now. So yeah, if you listen oh, to us wow. on YouTube, please like, share, subscribe. It's like 293. The first 21 episodes, I have no idea why they're not on the internet anywhere. Mm-hmm. Actually, they're on the old channel, She Said, He Said. And I have them in the archive somewhere, but I'm not putting those back out because there's just no point at this time. And <laughs> By the way, if you do ever get curious and want to go back and listen to the old episodes, we were She Said, He Said. We weren't from My Experience Podcast. I forgot when the transition happened, but eventually it did happen. And we were a relationship podcast in the beginning, and that changed. So, yeah. So yeah, I wanted to make that announcement. Yeah, sorry. Um, if your podcast isn't on YouTube, put it on YouTube. Um, I'm one of the we're one of the old people where <clears throat> you had to do everything manually. Now they just take your RSS feed, and now it's basically like it's part of your distribution list. So once you upload it to whoever your distributor is, they put it on YouTube for you. It, was, it literally took like five ten minutes. It's probably been like that for a while. So and uh, yeah. On that note, take but- care of yourself. <laughs> I, I thought about it. I said, yeah, they probably have gotten it a little bit faster in that process. I think they own Google now. I think they are Google. They, I think, I think they, there is a Google podcast thing, right? I think yeah. they bought Google podcast or something like that. I heard that uh, on someone else's um, podcast. So they use like whatever Google had running to kind of help. Uh, let me see. Google Podcast has officially gone the way of Google Play Music and has been integrated directly into YouTube. As of uh. April 2nd, Google Podcast ceased to function in the U.S. Fortunately, you still have some time to migrate your subscriptions. Blah, blah, blah. Damn it. I remember that when we first started the website and it was Google Podcast. I was like, Google has podcasts since when? Yeah. A lot of... I ain't gonna say a lot. A few of our... A few of the places we were distributed aren't gone. Stitcher's not around anymore. Wow. Um, yeah. I feel so out of the loop, but it's like, that's crazy. No, it's not. Yeah, I don't think it's crazy. I think they're finding it hard to stay profitable. Um, you said, that's, yeah. Because, you know, all you have is ads. You have mm-hmm. your podcast. But I don't know where they get their money from, now that I think about it. Because I pay Podbean every month. Mm-hmm. for space and they send it everywhere else i don't pay these distributors so i'm like and their services most of them are free you can just download their app and listen for free so it's like where are you getting the money or ads i don't know so all right that's a whole nother discussion for another time we're getting out of here take care of yourselves <laughs> physically mentally financially we catch y'all next time peace Bye.